Hello, it's Yusuke here. In this video, I'm going to go over a number of different methods that you can use to optimize your game in Unreal Engine. These methods will work for both Unreal Engine 4 and Unreal Engine 5, so don't worry if you're using an older version of Unreal. The first method is to use LODs. LODs stand for Level of Detail. In Unreal Engine, models can have multiple LODs. We can have a high quality version of a model and a low quality version of a model. LODs are based on the screen size, so if your camera is very close to a model, we're going to show you the high quality version of the model. And if your camera is very far away from a model, we can show you the low quality version of the model. Here's how you can set up LODs. If you're using any asset from Quixel Bridge, it will automatically have LODs. If you just select your mesh and go to where it's located inside of your project and open it up, on the top left, it's going to give us all the details of our mesh. So currently, as we're very close to the mesh, it's on LOD0 and has around 12,000 triangles. However, if I zoom out of my mesh, then its LOD will start to increase and the number of triangles it will have will start to reduce. So from this distance, it has around 3,000 triangles and is on LOD2. In order to check the amount of LODs that our model has, we can go over to the detail section and then go over to LOD picker and go here. So this model currently has five LODs. So if I go to LOD4, we can see this is the less detailed one. If I change this to be LOD0, then it's going to have a lot of detail. We can change the number of LODs that our model has by scrolling down and going to LOD settings, and here we can see this has five LODs. If I change this to be something like seven, and then go apply changes, scroll up, here under LOD picker, this is now gonna have seven levels of details. So we can see this LOD seven is very, very undetailed. We can also decide at what distance we want Unreal Engine to show a specified LOD. If we just check this custom box and scroll down and just uncheck this auto compute LOD distance. We can make it so that when we are at distance screen size, this value, it will show LOD too. So you can just play around with those values if you want it to be at a certain distance that you see a certain LOD. Now, if you're using your own model and you wanna set up LODs, this is how you do it. First, just import your model. So I'm gonna use this very simple monkey model that I got from Blender. I've imported it and if I just double click, and scroll down and go to my LOD settings. I'm gonna give this two LODs and click apply changes. And Unreal Engine will automatically generate some LODs for me. But if you wanted to use your own LOD, what we can do is go to LOD import and we can import the LOD that we want this to use for LOD2. So in Blender, I made this lower poly version of the monkey model. I know it looks really terrible, but I'm just showcasing an example. And under LOD import, I'm just going to import that lower version of the monkey model that I made. And now if I scroll up and go to LOD and select LOD2, then it's going to be the really bad low poly model of the monkey I made. So that's how you'd import custom LODs if you wanted to use them. I'm just going to change this back to LOD auto, but that's how you can basically play around with LODs to basically make your game a bit more optimized. In our viewport, if we just change our mode to level of detail colorization and go mesh LOD colorization. It will let us know what LOD our mesh is currently using. So if I zoom out, we can see our mesh will currently change its LODs. I'll showcase an image which will basically show what color represents which level of LOD. The next optimization tip I have is to use MIP maps. MIP maps are copies of original textures that are saved at lower resolutions. MIP maps are kind of like LODs for textures. When an object is further away from the camera, a lower resolution texture is shown. And when an object is closer towards the camera, a higher resolution texture is shown. In Unreal Engine, to generate a MIP map, use a texture ratio with a power of two. For example, a texture with a resolution of 512 by 1024, and Unreal Engine will automatically generate a MIP map for that texture. Unreal Engine does not generate a MIP map for a texture which does not have a ratio to a power of two. For example, if I was using a texture which had a resolution of 321 by 431, because that's not to the power of 2, a MIP map won't be generated for it. So a quick tip, you can just use textures which have a resolution to the power of 2, and MIP maps will automatically be generated for it, which can help optimize your game. The next optimization tip I want to talk to you about is lighting. In Unreal Engine, there are two types of lights that we can have, dynamic lights and static lights. Dynamic lights are lights which can be changed at runtime, so we can change how the light appears in our game, whilst it's playing. In order to make a dynamic light, just select it and just make sure it's movable. Although the problem with dynamic lights is they take up quite a lot of performance. It's best to have a stationary or static light. And that basically means that in our level, 
we'll build the lighting and that's how the lighting is going to be inside of our game and we can't change it at runtime. All of this saves in performance because our level can basically build how the lighting is going to be in our game. So where you can, try and use stationary or static lights instead of using movable dynamic lights. The next lighting optimization tip I want to talk to you about is draw distance. We can make it so that light is only visible when our player character is within a certain distance of our light. In order to do that, what we can do is just scroll down and we want to go to performance. And if I just set the max draw distance to be 4000 and the max distance fade range to also be 4000. And I'm just going to delete my directional light. Now, this light's only going to show when my player character is within 4,000 units of this light. So I just click play and move away. We can see that the light will slowly start to fade away and I can't see it. However, as my player character moves closer towards the light, it will become brighter. And by using draw distance, we can just basically help a bit with the performance and optimization of our game. The next optimization tip I want to give you is to include an options menu with inside your game where the player character can control how the game will run and play. So I've created a simple options menu inside of my game and I want to go over the two main options that I think you should give to the player. So the first option I think you should give to the player is an option to control the graphics. So currently I have a very simple graphics menu. If I set this to low, then I'll make all the models, particles and everything inside of my game to a lower quality. So if I just click apply, we can see that everything becomes of a lower quality. However, if I move this all the way up to ultra, then all the models, materials, and everything will look to a high quality. And then the second option I make sure to include in your game is a resolution button. So the higher the resolution, the higher quality everything's gonna look, and the lower the resolution, the lower quality everything's gonna look. So those are the two main options I'd include inside of my graphics menu when making a game. So I think it's important to make a options menu. That way, the people who play your game, depending on the quality of their PC, they can make it run and play smoothly and enjoy the experience of playing your game. The final optimization tip I have for you is to make sure that you don't have too much complicated stuff running on Event Tick. So Event Tick is this node in Unreal Engine which will run every single frame. If we have loads of complicated calculations and nodes running on Event Tick, this can impact the performance of our game. Sometimes it's unavoidable and we have to use some things on event tick and we can still have high performance while running some nodes on event tick. Although if we have loads and loads and loads and loads of nodes running on event tick, then it can impact the performance of your game. An alternative to event tick that I like to use is the set timer by node event where we can set events to run every couple of seconds. So that's all for this video. I hope you've learned how to optimize your game. If you found this helpful, if you could like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.